whether high up or deep down. For your work, you need strong equipment and smart solutions for all kinds of challenges, starting from basic products to essential components and up to intelligent technologies. Developments are shaping the way you handle operations. The future of your industry holds exciting innovations. Let us show you the possibilities. Doesn't matter where you work. Team up with us for your success. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Finnegan Moape. I'm the uh, Vice President of Global Sales at Measuring, which is headquartered in Canada. And currently, I'm in California, USA, just outside of San Francisco. It's a pleasure to participate at this year's Minds and Mets virtual conference. Uh, I wish we could all be in the same place, but unfortunately, you know, we're still a ways back from that. Uh, I'm joined here by my colleague, Ms. Mr. Edson Antonio who is the Global Manager AI and Data Science at Valet in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Edson, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, what is it that you do at Valet? Sure. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody that's watching us. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Finnegan. It's my pleasure to be here okay. with you. As we said, it would be great to be sharing a mug of coffee or something <laughs> like that very soon. Yes, so of at course. Valet, uh, at Valet, I'm... I'm the global manager, as you said, for AI and artificial intelligence. And the idea, the objective is really how can we use, how can we make the most from the data that we have in the company in order to take better decisions and to support on the daily routines that we have, not only for mm -hmm. cost reduction, like maintenance and how, how can we improve the maintenance or improve production, this type of thing, but also how can we use data and take the best decision in order to protect people as well and to make the company yeah. become even more safe. Yeah, yeah. So part of the, the that's that's a great uh, comment about safety. Um, I, as a son of a miner, my dad worked in the mines in, in a country called Zambia. Uh, growing up, safety was on the lips of miners and, and everybody in the community. So uh, it's sort of interesting to see how this technology meshes with those strong cultures in mining. So how would you say you're developing an organizational culture that leverages this digital thinking into the heart of the business and such that the strategies work together to, to transform how the corporation operates, as you mentioned? So we're gonna, I'm gonna make a comment here, but mm -hmm. please let's, let's Hold the hold the stones. Don't throw the stones. Don't cast the stones in me yet, because what I'm going to say, <laughs> most people may may may, may feel impact. But I, I saw a video from a, a TED conference once, and the guy was yeah. saying, "Buildings don't kill people. What kills people are the engineers." And, <laughs> and initially, I look at the dead. It's okay if I say that in the company, people is gonna kill me, cast <laughs> stones in me. But what It'll he make was it true, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But what he was meaning was the building doesn't have a will to try to kill people. It's not that the building is an evil machine or, or, or an evil organism that wants to. But if mm -hmm. the building is poorly designed by the engineers, by the crew that was designing it, then it becomes a tool in order to kill people. When we come yes. to the company and when we think about innovation, digital, AI, machine learning, and all the other sort of technology that we can use to reduce costs of the company in order to protect people, we have to think that if those solutions are not embedded properly in the process, if we don't deliver a reliable and sustainable process together with those solutions, if they're not fought through to become a barrier of protection or to become a sustainable tool to reduce costs and so on, then ourselves, we start to put people in risk and we start to put the production in risk. So I think exactly. uh, a, a lever that we, we need to have and we need to consider very much in order to create this digital culture, this innovative culture, this uh, future culture is what we are doing, is it really becoming embedded into the process of the company 
or are we getting lost in a few POCs or in many POCs instead of focusing just on a few things that are really important to the organization, digging deep yeah. and really making sure that that's impacting the process. All right, that's, that's, that's fantastic. So let, let me ask you this. How, how are you making sure that the engineers don't kill you at, <laughs> at, at Valet? So can you, can you briefly describe how your, you know, your automation at Valet uh, you know, is being implemented across your operations uh, and anything that you see for now and, and in the future? You comment yeah, sure, a little bit sure. about that. And, and, and let's not make fun of the engineers because that counts for <laughs> computer scientists, AI yeah. scientists, right? I'm, I'm exactly. just joking, understood. Well, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think one of, it's very easy that we get lost into, the, into mm -hmm. these new methods and this new way of thinking, so Agile and Scrum, and we really lose the essence of good project management. And we say, no, we are, I'm being agile, but we don't even have a minimum requirement list in order for the project to be successful. So before talking about technology, one of the things I would raise is, it's really important to measure success. What is, what, what, what does it take to become successful in what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. What's really success for me? And then therefore, what are the minimal requirements for that to, to be accomplished? Then I can look to the market or look internal links and look for the best solution that I may have. Uh, usually what I see is the opposite. Somebody says, oh, take a look at this neural network that was just released by MIT is amazing. Let's find somewhere to use it, <laughs> which in reality, should be the other way around, right? I have this problem. I need to solve this problem. And for solving this problem, this is what success looks like. These are the minimum requirements I need to fulfill. And what are the solutions in the market that I have to solve this? Maybe it's the neural network, the fancy neural network, the only solution that's going to solve that. But maybe it's a linear regression, very simple linear regression that I may have to use to solve. So I would, I would twist a little bit the mindset, the, the thinking, uh, the way of thinking, instead of looking to the technologies in the market and being marveled by everything that's being launched, twist a little bit, think about the, the problem, problems, what does it take to solve those problems and then look to the technologies in the market. Then I can, I can talk a little bit about automation and AI and even making the most, and then, even before delivering the solutions, AI and data analysis can make a, 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 a big bet, can be a big bet in this point, because in order to, what I'm seeing that most of the companies are not doing is that they are piloting solutions. They wanna mm -hmm. see what the solutions are able to do, but they are not doing any plans in advance to see to what sites, to what operations they should scale that if it works. So basically, they have a plan to pilot the technology, but they have no idea what they will do if the technology works. Exactly. So what usually we are doing is that mm -hmm. in advance of thinking in POCs, in advance of thinking minimal viable products and piloting technologies, we define using data, using advanced analytics, we define what are the major bottlenecks of the company in terms of cost, safety, and so on. And then in advance, we create a plan. These are the sites that may receive this. These are the maturity of the sites. I want. I think we're gonna go in details about maturity and assessment in, in mm -hmm. for the questions, right? And only after that, I start to, to, to go into POCs. Because then if some of those are successful, I can go back and say, okay, now I know where I need to scale that. Yes. So I, I think you, you touched on a few things there. There's there's the planning aspect of um, mm -hmm. what, what are the major problems? You know, how do we craft a solution for this? You know, yeah, we could have something that's uh, it's meeting the criteria for an MVP uh, as, as a solution, but you, mm -hmm. you need to really characterize what the problem is and what the future looks like once that problem is solved and you know, the improvements yeah. that come. So we have a, a question from the audience right now. And what's, 
what the question is, is what's the most important issue in the mining sector for you, Edson, in your role as you know, global manager of AI and data science at Valley? Making sure the decisions we're taking to scale solutions impacts mm -hmm. and help the most people to become safe. Definitely people safe is the most impactful and most priority thing that we have in any, any organization, right? So uh, I'm sorry about what I heard that you lost your, your, your father in an accident in a mining company, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, we need to work. Doesn't matter in which role we are. So in my role, taking decisions through data, creating innovative solutions is what I do. But first of all, I need to do that in a way that nobody more lose their parents, lose their, their father. So that, that must be the first one. The second one is how can I how, how can I help the company to know what are really the bottlenecks of the organization through the use of data and how can I pick the best solutions from the market in order to solve that? Because it's very easy to go with current thoughts. So people can have current thoughts. So inspection is a problem. I'm not saying it's not, but that's, mm -hmm. and if someone says that 10 years ago, maybe everybody's still saying that today, and maybe that's not true. So who is going to say if that's not true? Usually it's me. <laughs> Usually yeah. it's the data science guy. But you have <laughs> to have enough proof to say that. And then why are you saying that? And then that, that involves technology and often you don't have enough data to say that. So you have to plan in advance what are you willing to say it's true or not, and then work with the data prepare the data, prepare the foundations. So making sure that the data is proper, making sure that you have the proper foundations, making sure that you are attacking the right problems and making sure that you have the, the, the right plans triggered and, and empowered by data to, do, to make the right impact on the organization. That's that's great. I think I think what we talked about here is just the challenges that you're facing both in the long term and short term uh, mm -hmm. in the adoption of digital thinking in the mining. And, and you mentioned something very critical there. If you look at process people and product as, as the three pillars of your business operation, number one is your people because they make it happen. And the mm -hmm. processes should really protect those people. Because yeah. if you without those people, you can't have the product, which means your financial meets your financial goals of making a profit. So uh, let's let's segue into if we're going to look into the future, look into our crystal ball, right? Uh, the, what's the what what excites you? You know, we've we've talked about safety and production, and what what is what is the excitement for you as you go to work every day about this digital transformation in the mining industry? I think that we have a we have an opportunity to change the world, right? Because when you talk about mining, you're talking mm -hmm. about almost everything. So we are we're just being able to talk to each other now because there are a lot of components inside of our machines, inside of our, our computers that were crafted using elements that were mined. So you, mm -hmm. you have you have to have a mining company going and mining copper in order to make the circuits. You have to have a mining company going and mining aluminum to have your car and so on and so on and so on. So as you have these basic elements being provided and delivered to you by mining companies, if mining companies are the ones that start to change the the concept, the ways of thinking, if they start to adopt autonomous machines or if they start to use artificial intelligence to look for best ways to reduce the carbon emissions, for example, mm -hmm. then probably they will, they will send a message to the world as everything that we use comes from there. You'll be able to say this computer is carbon free because the mining, mining companies are not mining emitting process. carbon anymore. Yeah, the mining process is better. Or mm -hmm. this computer doesn't kill anybody to be produced because nobody dies anymore in mining company. Or this yeah, computer doesn't put anybody in risk or the logistics done by uh, an autonomous machine. So yeah. I, it's it's real opportunity to change the world by using uh, innovation, machine learning and so on and, and sharing a message that I think not that, we don't have many companies, mining companies that can share the message as we can. 
Yeah, I, I think you you touched on what are one of the most the hard, hardest topics uh, in business right now, which is the ESG uh, consideration, mm -hmm. uh, the environmental, yeah. social responsibility, and governance, and and the mining industry has had a fair share of um, incidences in, in across all th three spectrums: environmental incidences, social responsibilities, how to protect the people that produce these precious minerals, you know, um, and items that you make a profit off of and the mm -hmm. corruption that's been plagued, that's plagued the industry across the world. Um, I, I think that you, you, you made great points there that we have to, as, as an industry, we have to take that responsibility. Now, can you maybe share specific examples of technologies I just saw um, yeah, autonomous okay. mining vehicles being, you know, controlled by uh, AI with, you know, predictive analytics, can you share? Can you share sure. some of the exact technologies that you're excited about? Yeah, for sure. For example, on the ESG, we know that the, mm -hmm. the emission when it comes to cars is related to mm -hmm. the variability of speed. If you mm -hmm. vary speed, if you vary the power of the engine by pressing the, the accelerator, you, you, you increase the emission of carbon. Mm -hmm. So when you have autonomous device, not only reduce the cost, but you also reduce the emission. But also, even by not having autonomous device, something that we did in the company here, we created some neural networks to evaluate what was the pattern behavior for each one of the operators, through which one of the paths. And then we, we compare that against the emission of the carbon emission. So we had the neural networks to calculate what would be the best speed to be used in each one of the paths in order to keep the production high, but also reduce the, the emission of carbon, the carbon emissions. And after we create that, we embedded that into each one of the machines, into each one of the uh, haul trucks. And today what it happens is that the operator is driving the haul truck. And when it comes to a specific point, the haul truck tells him, you should go by 20 kilometers because you're going to 21. It's not going to make any difference to our production and you're gonna uh, produce more carbon. You are going to have more carbon emission. So today they are being, they are driving, being assisted by a neural natural that's embedded into the truck. And we are having, we're seeing that the carbon emissions are declining, they're going, uh, going down because of this partnership between human and artificial intelligence. Excellent, excellent. That's 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 fantastic to to hear that. Um, I guess we're running up against a time here, so maybe as as a conclusion, we'll take another question from the audience. Uh, is the question is how can data and analytics improve underground mining outside just outside of safety? What else can 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 be improved using data analytics? I think analytics. many aspects. Uh, I, I believe. I would raise at least two here. One is uh, maintenance. Uh, we have in the company, and I know it's not the company with, uh, that exists already as well, which is the predictability of uh, heavy equipment, failure for heavy equipment. So we have in the company today, for example, for engines, um, transmissions, and the, the, these types of part, these parts of the machines, we are able to predict when they're going to break. So before, what happened is that the user should have to do lots of preventive maintenance and come with the vendors to evaluate if the equipment are good or not. And today what we're doing, we're reducing a lot the preventive maintenance. We're reducing a lot the corrective maintenance because we're having the, the machine learning predicting which equipment are going to fail or not. So we are able to focus on those equipment. So we're being able to extend the life of each one of the assets. Therefore, that, that's reducing a lot the cost of each one of the assets. That's one thing. Another thing is that we've been able also to identify inside of the, 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 the mines uh, bottlenecks. So mm -hmm. places where I may have a kiwi, where one, one loader is becoming before another loader that's uh, uh, which not as speed as the other one. So by identifying bottlenecks in these machines, or if, I'm a, if a crusher is gonna break, or if a crusher is gonna, we need to 
increase the speed of crushing for a specific crusher in order to improve the, the productivity. This is also being used. We using mm -hmm. machine learning today, and we've been able to reduce uh, sometimes even 40% of the lost time in queues or waiting process and improving 40% of productivity. So reducing Excellent. costs, improving productivity, I think something that we are already using and can be something to, 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 to be fostered. Thank you, Edson. It's been a, a pleasure talking to you today. I've learned so much and I'm excited about the future. So thank you everyone. Thank you to Shireen at Minds and Mets. Thank you. Thank you. Whether high up or deep down, for your work, you need strong equipment and smart solutions for all kinds of challenges, starting from basic products to essential components and up to intelligent technologies. Developments are shaping the way you handle operations. The future of your industry holds exciting innovations. Let us show you the possibilities. Doesn't matter where you work. Team up with us for your success.